the biggest myths in construction. Who even comes up with this stuff? A facade insulated with polystyrene doesn't breathe. I'm curious myself about how this really works. So today I'm doing an experiment with real materials. Whatever the outcome, there is a much more important aspect of these materials that no one talks about. But we will get to that at the end of the video. So listen up. Materials don't have lungs. They can't breathe, even if marketers try to teach them. I'm Richard Hurai and today I'll show you what this is really about with measurements. All you need are some everyday things. A hygrometer, a steam humidifier, an aquarium, a thermal camera, and some test samples. First thing, what marketers call breathing is actually the ability of a material to let water vapor pass through. It's expressed using the term diffusion resistance factor, a dimensionless number shown in technical data sheets using the Greek letter Mi. It tells you how many times more resistant the material is to vapor diffusion compared to the same thickness of air. So the air represents value of one. And here's where marketers start sharpening their pencils. Polystyrene has a diffusion resistance of about 20 to 40. Let's call it 30. Mineral wool, on the other hand, has a diffusion resistance of 1. So the same as the air, but the scale of vapor permeability isn't from 1 to 40. It goes all the way to infinity. Yeah, infinity. That's where metals come in, like aluminum foil used for baking. So how does 30 look now? Let's stay in the road of building materials relevant here. Take a vapor barrier film used in roofs. The diffusion resistance ranges from 200,000 to 1 million. Even on that scale, 30 is nothing. About 0.0012%. Enough with numbers. If you didn't like physics experiments in school, skip to the results. Oh, you're still here. I knew everyone loves experiments. I will divide this aquarium first with mineral wool, then with polystyrene. On one side, I will be generating 100% air humidity and will monitor how the humidity rises on the other side over time. In other words, which material is the better breather? I taped the edges with vapor-proof tape so the humidity doesn't sneak in from the sides because mm, I suck at cutting precise shapes. I've never been able to cut straight. I'm genuinely curious about the difference. So let's start the test. Go! I note anything here, it's making a proper fog. In the monitored section above the mineral wool, humidity rises fast, about 1% every 2 minutes. After 1 hour, humidity increased by 31%. No surprise there, the diffusion resistance is 1. But what about the polystyrene? After an hour, the humidity above increased only by 4%. So I let the test run longer. After the second hour, it was up another 8%. After 3 hours, the increase was 20%. So averaging 6.7% per hour. And that really surprised me. I expected much smaller difference. This shattered my own hypothesis that marketers were exaggerating. My bad. It was actually in the data sheets all along. Polystyrene lights vapor through 30 times slower. No, no. Yet my super amateur measurements showed it was only 4.6 times slower. Before the test, I was convinced the difference would be half that or even less. Let's see what happens when you really try to block water vapor a vapor barrier. This time I divided the aquarium with just a thin vapor barrier film and ran the same test. After one hour, 0% increase. After two hours, still 0%. Even after four hours, no change in the humidity on the other side. So which materials actually stops vapor from passing through? Vapor barrier. But if everyone is so obsessed with vapor flowing freely, why do they even make vapor barriers? Well, the idea is to help moisture to escape from the structure before it condenses into water due to cold temperatures. But you'll never avoid condensation completely. During the year, every structure will go through a period when vapor is thrown into liquid. What is important is the annual balance between vapor that condenses and vapor that escapes. To oversimplify how much moisture condenses during winter, 
moisture and how much can evaporate in this summer. If more moisture leaves than enters over a year, then the structure is well designed. I won't go into details, but in our climate, vapor mainly travels from the interior to the exterior. <sighs> Bro get to the point. Where is the vapor barrier actually used? I'm getting there. The most common use is in pitched roofs. The roof tiles No, no. Roof tiles are stacked so air can So air can flow between them and the waterproofness is ensured by the geometry. Rainwater runs from tile to tile to the gutter. So what's the problem? That means vapor can escape too, right? Sure, but wind-driven rain can blow water under the tiles and soak the insulation. That's why there is another layer called secondary waterproofing membrane. Do not confuse with the vapor barrier. It's vapor permeable, but less than mineral wool beneath it. So vapor flow might slow down there. Plus, heat rises and carries more vapor upward than sideways. So roofs deal with more vapor than walls. And wet insulation doesn't insulate as well as dry. Since most heat escapes upwards, it makes sense to keep the insulation dry. And that's why vapor barriers are installed under the roof thermal insulation. These days we use so-called intelligent climate membranes. Their diffusion resistance changes depending on conditions from 1400 to 22000. In winter they block vapor. In summer, when the roof heats up, they let trapped moisture escape even into the interior, helping to dry the roof out. But it's not just about thermal and diffusion properties. Let me end with something to think about. For the good feeling of having a more breathable material with slightly better insulation properties, you'll pay 250% more. Yes, some types of mineral wool do insulate a bit better than polystyrene, but not by 250%. With the same 10 cm thickness, wool insulates only about 5% better. I have to check it. I can't resist to see if a thermal camera actually detects that polystyrene insulate worse than mineral wool. I placed an air heater inside the aquarium and sealed it half with polystyrene and half with mineral wool. According to the technical datasheets, polystyrene has slightly worse thermal insulation properties. This should result in more heat passing through to the surface, which should be detectable by this thermal camera. Yeah, as I suspected, the difference in thermal resistance, just one tenth is nearly invisible. Now, the main thing, the environmental impact of wool versus polystyrene. At first glance, you'd think polystyrene as a petroleum product must be worse for the environment than mineral wool. After all, minerals are natural, right? But go download some EPD certificates and you might radically change your mind. EPD stands for Environmental Product Declaration. To be objective, I adjusted the thickness of polystyrene to match the thermal resistance of 10 cm of wool. That means polystyrene would need to be like 10.6 centimeters thick. Now check this out. Global warming potential. CO2 emissions during production, transport and installation. Wool 1.6 times more than polystyrene. Ozone depletion potential. Wool 3.3 times more, more than 3 times acidification potential. You might know something like acid rain. Wool 6.8 times more. It's measured as sulfur dioxide equivalents. Water consumption. Wool 1.9 times more. Waste production. Wool 10 times more than polystyrene. The only category where polystyrene is slightly worse is energy consumption, about 4% more than wool. Which I don't quite get since you have to melt rock to make wool. But hey, I would love to learn. Sorry, but from an environmental point of view, insulating a house with mineral wool is really hard to justify. Honestly, I would welcome a law requiring at least tree planting as a compensation. Of course, there are situations where a polystyrene just isn't an option, like in public or tall buildings where you have to minimize fire spread on facade. Yes, polystyrene will not stop a fire, but evacuating a family house doesn't take 30 minutes. Another case where wool is better is on black facades or near chimneys. Polystyrene is only rated up to 80 degrees Celsius. Likes and subs are the best way to say thanks for the 50 plus hours I put into making this video. I hope you found this comparison useful. Let me know in the comments what you like me to cover next. Ciao.